Hi, and thank you for taking a look at the Advisory Capital Broker Training Program. My name is Alex and I am the primary instructor for the course. In this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about key terms that you might bump into from a broker's perspective. Now, why would we create a video on this in the first place? I wanted to create this video solely for the reason that I think many people are nervous about what they might encounter after they're already in the program. Am I going to understand everything that they're talking about? Is this gonna be difficult to comprehend? Well, I don't think so, and I wanna show you just how common many of the key terms are. Now, if I made a video about every single key term we're going to encounter, it would be a very long video. So what I wanted to do is grab a couple of key terms that you've probably bumped into and maybe a couple that you haven't and just show you what they mean to you as a broker and how easy they are to comprehend. You'll see our first one here is a flagged hotel. Now this is one that many people have not bumped into much. So what does that really mean? Well, a flagged hotel is nothing more than a hotel that belongs to a large chain or franchise. You'll typically hear this as industry vernacular as you're dealing with lenders. They might say, we only do flagged hotels, or we really only like flagged hotels for this type of deal, or we only do ground up construction for flagged hotels. So what are they really saying? Just replace that with any brand that you're familiar with. Well, we really only like doing uh, franchised hotels, Marriott hotels, Hilton brand hotels, things like that. What they're really saying is they might not have a specific level of comfort that they would want to lend on if the hotel is not a flagged hotel, meaning a bed and breakfast or a one-off boutique hotel that you might see in various locations. Now as a broker, are you gonna be selling flagged hotels or working with flagged hotels as a partner? Probably not. What you'll likely run into is you will have a client coming to you looking to do some type of project that is in regard to a flagged hotel. This could be remodeling, this could be ground up construction, this could be an acquisition, it could even be a refinance. And then you will know, okay, when I go to my lenders, I need to make sure that they do flagged hotels. If your client possibly is working with a property that is not a flagged hotel, like a boutique hotel or a bed and breakfast, you might want to also look at the lender's criteria to see if they do hotels that are not flagged hotels. You will only really need to know what this term means in regards to the work that you do as a broker to help your client. You may see this in lender criteria, and that's why this is one of the key terms we like to teach you to make sure you feel comfortable when you do see this. Now, another term that you see here that you are probably familiar with is appraised value. You've probably bumped into appraised value here and there if you purchased a home, purchased a vehicle, or sold a home or a vehicle. Now, what does appraised value mean to you as a broker? Well, you're not doing appraisals. You're not coming up with appraised amounts. Where you might bump into this term is when you're determining how much your client may be able to borrow based on the appraised value of the property they are looking at. They also might bump into this if they have some aged equipment that they want to leverage. Well, if they have some old equipment that they want to borrow against, we might need to understand the fair market value or the appraised value of that said equipment. Remember, as a broker, you always have the luxury of reaching out to the lender and asking them for specific guidance. You'll also be able to reach out to us for any inquiries, and you always defer to the underwriters for what they would like to see since they are the real decision maker in each deal. Now you see here our final term is owner occupied. That might sound like a common phrase, but what would it mean to you as a broker? Well, very often we need to know as brokers, is the property owner occupied? Meaning exactly what it sounds like. Is the person that owns the building or will own the building going to occupy it? If so, this could be a determining factor in lending. Now you might wonder which is better. Well, that all depends on the various scenarios that you might bump into as a broker. For example, if your client is going for an SBA loan, it might be very advantageous for it to be owner occupied because the SBA typically only funds deals if they are 51% or more owner occupied. Now, while that's a good thing, the flip side of that is if your client is not going to occupy it and they're going for some other type of lending product or funding product, there might be a remark in the lending criteria that says we do not fund owner occupied property. So then you would know that that specific financial product is not a fit for your client. And you would then be able to look at the financial products you do have available to you that allow for owner occupied properties. You see that most of these key terms are not that complex and are not that difficult to understand. 
All you need to know is what it means to you as a broker. Again, we always encourage you to reach out to the lender and their underwriting team to understand any terms you're ever confused about, and they will happily explain those to you. They want you to understand their lending criteria, and they are always willing to teach you or educate you on it more. In fact, most of the individuals you will interact with at a lender are solely there for broker edification to ensure that you are articulating the concepts of their products to your clients correctly. Never be intimidated by something you don't understand. That's exactly why we created this program. That's exactly why we have support for you after this program. And that's also why the underwriters at the lender are also there. They want to make sure that you understand what you're talking about and they can help you with your clients as you navigate each of the products that you have available to you because you have so many available to you in the first place. Now, I know we just went through a few terms just briefly, but what I want you to notice is that you weren't overwhelmed. You didn't feel like we were talking over your head. We did not talk above you. And we did that in a very short video. Just imagine if we had two dedicated days to talk you through all of these key terms to ensure that you feel comfortable, knowing that it's not the only time you get to hear this training and you can always refer back to us as your support system and also go through the on-demand version of the course that you get access to.